Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about Smart Terrain Points, or STPs for short. In any open world game, you see NPCs in the world doing specific things, like villagers playing animations in a corner, guards standing their ground, or following a patrol path, and this is what we'll be adding to the game today. There are many different ways of doing this, and today we'll be looking at scripting terrain points manually to execute path follow and animation behaviors. Another cool way to do this would be to use goal-oriented action planning, also known as GOPAI, and I plan on doing videos on that in the future. But for now, we'll stick to a quick implementation that works well with behavior trees. I wanted to take some time to set up a bunch of STPs to bring the world to life with villagers and other NPCs, but I kind of lack the assets. Even if I wanted to purchase some asset packs from the asset store, I wouldn't be able to share them with you guys and this would restrict my ability to make this project free and available to anyone. Hopefully, with this setup you will be able to create worlds using your own assets. So here is what my smart terrain point looks like in the editor. I have a clickable icon to identify it and some lines that show the path this STP has. The line points are defined by child objects of the STP. To show stuff in the scene for a particular component, Unity provides an easy way to implement these and you don't need to create any custom editors. Here I have my smartterrainpoint.cs file which is the component for the STP. At the bottom here I have a function called onDrawGizmos, which is a function Unity will automatically call when you're in the scene view and this object is selected. So first, I get all the child transforms of my smart terrain point. This is somewhat a cheap way of setting waypoints and you could have created an editor script to make adding and removing terrain points easier, but in an effort to keep this tutorial accessible, you add terrain points by simply adding empty objects as a child of your STP and their transform will be used as a point. To set an icon for your gizmo, you call draw icon with the position of the gizmo, the name of the gizmo, and if it should scale or not when you zoom in and out of the scene view. Here I have this double ternary operator which isn't the most readable code but it does the job. Technically, I would avoid using this kind of implementation inside game logic because it isn't very scalable, but for a quick editor function it doesn't really matter. So to set the gizmo name I look if the cooldown timer is greater than zero, which would mean the STP is on cooldown. If it is on cooldown, I use the cooldown gizmo name. If it's not on cooldown, I then check if the STP has been started. And if it has been started, I use the STP active gizmo name. And if it isn't, I use the inactive gizmo name. These gizmo names refer to icons I have added to a folder in assets slash gizmos. This is where Unity will look for gizmo icons you specify in gizmos.drawicon. Next, I start drawing the lines for my gizmo. So I run through the terrain points I have. If it's the first terrain point in the list, I draw a line from the STP's transform position to the first point in the list. For all other points, I draw a line from the previous point to the next point. At runtime, the STP itself is part of the terrain points, but to avoid caching the list of points and having to keep track of points that have been deleted and re-added, I get them every frame so the STP itself isn't part of them. Then for each point in the list, I draw a little cube at the point position in the scene to make them easy to identify. Finally, I check if the path follow type of the STP is a looping path, and if it is, and we have points in the terrain point list, I draw a line from the last point to the position of the STP. So in the editor, it looks like this. I can add a child transform to my STP which will be used as a point, and can position it in the world. It doesn't need to be perfectly flush with the ground as the code using the position ensures the destination of the NPC dictated by the point is on navmesh. Then if I choose to loop the path here in the inspector of the script, you'll see it adds the final line looping the path. Now when I press play, we can see my NPC selects the smart terrain point and starts following the path. Basically, the behavior tree looks for the nearest STP and tries to use it. Once it chooses one, the behavior tree keeps running that STP until something else causes it to exit. I added some basic features to my STP that we'll get into in a minute, just to show some examples of how to customize it, and I hope you'll be inspired to find other things you can add into your system. Let's look at how this is achieved using a bit of code and some behavior tree nodes. First, we have the actual code in the smartterrainpoint.cs file. 
I define an enumeration called STP path follow type to indicate which kind of path this should be. Loop path is for looping paths. Exit on path end is for the NPC to abandon the STP once it has reached the end point of the path. And finally, stay on last point, which tells the NPC to follow the path until the last point, and then stay there indefinitely until something else happens and pulls him away. Then I define constrings for the name of my icons in the gizmo folder, which we used in the onDraw gizmo function. After that, we get into variables specific to this STP. The first variables are general settings. We have the max range at which this STP can be selected by an NPC, and we have the behavior tree type to specify what kind of NPC can use it. You don't want villagers taking guard STPs and getting mixed up. Then we have a variable wait at path point time, which is how long we want the NPC to wait at each point before moving on to the next point in the path. Next, we have the cooldown time, which is how long this STP should remain invalid after an NPC has used it and exited the STP. This again is useful for contextual stuff like forcing a villager to go do something else and not repeat the same thing constantly. And also not have an other villager immediately come and take his place. And finally, we have the path follow type, which I just explained. I also added animation settings to further show how STPs can be customized. Sadly, I don't really have good animations to show, but the code is there for you to use. First, we have the on path point reach trigger name, which is a trigger that will be called on the animator once a path point has been reached. You can then set the wait at path point time to match the animator's length. So the NPC plays an animation at each point before moving on. We also have a path end trigger name, which is an animation trigger that will be called when the NPC reaches the end of the path to further specialize the behavior of this NPC. Leaving these animations blank is fine and it will simply not call any triggers at path points. For the private variables, we have a terrain path point, which we covered before, a boolean to indicate if the STP has been started or taken by an NPC, we have endpoint reached, which helps the behavior tree identify the moment the NPC has reached the end of the STP. It keeps track of the next path point index to easily choose the next node to go to, and finally, the flow variable cooldown timer, which keeps track of how long this STP has been on cooldown. In awake, we first get all the child transforms of the STP using get components and children. This returns an array, so we add the array as a parameter in the constructor of a list to create a new list with the contents of the array. Then we register this smart terrain point to the smart terrain point manager, who is in charge of handling STPs. Then we sample the nav mesh at the STP's position and use it to set its transform dot position y value to be at the terrain height. This isn't really necessary, but ensures the STP stays on top of the terrain at nav mesh height. And finally, we insert this transform in the terrain point list at the first index, so this STP is part of the terrain points as I explained before. In update, all we do is check if the cooldown timer has been set and is greater than zero. And if it is, we decrement it by time.delta time. You'll often see tutorials that have both a timer and a boolean to set something on cooldown, but we can avoid using the boolean entirely as simply checking if the cooldown is not zero acts like our boolean and avoids having to keep track of the bool state. Next, we have on path point reach, which is the function the behavior tree calls when an NPC has reached the path point. This increments the index of the next path point, then uses the modulus operator to reset the index to zero when it has reached the max size of the list. If you aren't familiar with the modulus operator, it basically returns the remainder of a division. So 10 modulus two, is the remainder of 10 divided by two. Two fits exactly five times in 10, so there's no remainder, and modulus will return zero. If I do five modulus two, the closest multiple of two to five is four, so there is one remaining. So five modulus two equals one. If the number is smaller than the modulus variable, then the value itself is returned. So for example, two modulus five equals two. 5 fits 0 times in 2, so modulus just returns the number. All this to say the modulus is a good way to loop a number back to 0 when it has reached the limit, in this case the size of the list. If my path point count here is say 3, then the first time we check this value it will be 1 modulus 3 which equals 1. 
then 2 modulus 3, which equals 2, and then when we reach 3, it will be 3 modulus 3, and 3 fits exactly once in 3 with no remainder, so the modulus is 0. We can maybe make a quick explain this episode talking about modulus, as that was a pretty quick explanation, but all you need to know is when the next path point index has reached terrain path point count, it will reset to 0. Finally, if we are not looping the path and our index is greater than the point count, we set the endpoint as being reached and set the index to be the last index in the list so it doesn't loop. Then we have a function to simply fetch the position of the next path point, mostly used by the behavior tree as it's following the path. After that we have a reset function which basically returns the STP to its initial state after it has been used by resetting some values. This is used by the Smart Terrain Point Manager when giving the STP to another NPC. And finally, we have on STP exit, which is similar to reset, but is used by the behavior tree when the NPC has finished the STP to set the STP in cooldown. So one function is called before the STP is assigned, and the other is called when the STP is unassigned. So that's about it for the Smart Terrain Point class. The next and final class we'll look at is the Smart Terrain Point Manager, and then we'll have a quick look at the behavior tree to wrap it up. The Smart Terrain Point Manager is a static class because really it's just a utility class that needs to exist for the lifetime of the application. We also don't need an instance of an object to pass the reference around, and we don't really care that it's lazily loaded as it doesn't have a performance impact when the class is constructed. So first we have two lists, an available Smart Terrain Point list and a Smart Terrain Point in use list. We juggle them from one list to the other to keep the list shorter as we'll need to look through these lists often. Kind of similar to how the open and close lists work in Astar Pathfinding algorithm if you're familiar with that. So the first function is register Smart Terrain Point, which as we saw earlier is called by the STP on awake. All it does is check if the STP is on valid navmesh, and if it is, it adds it to the available STP list. And if it's not on navmesh, it pops a warning in the console to inform us it will be ignored, as it's never going to be reachable. Then we have select nearest reachable terrain point, which is a function the behavior tree calls to find STPs. The parameters are the agent looking for an STP, and has an out parameter that returns the path if needed. When we search for a smart terrain point, we need to see if it's reachable, so we calculate the path to it. So might as well return that to the function caller if needed, so he doesn't need to recalculate the path again, as that can be expensive. The return value of the function is the smart terrain point itself that was found and validated. So when looking for an STP, the first thing we do is sort the list based on the destination to the agent. Here, I simply use the sort method of list to do this. This syntax here might seem confusing if you aren't familiar with lambdas, but it's really not that complicated. I have covered lambdas and anonymous functions in previous videos, but don't hesitate to ask in the comments if you have any questions. Basically, x and y here are the references to the first and second smart terrain point in the list the algorithm is comparing at any given time. And then this code is executed to specify how the sort function should compare the two objects to determine how they should be sorted. Here, we are comparing the square magnitude of the vector from the agent to the transform position of element x to the square magnitude of the vector from the agent to the element y. Again, x and y are smart terrain points here. This returns a list of nearest STP points in ascending order then we can iterate through the list and see if any of them are suitable for our NPC. We do this by calling isValidTerrainPoint, passing in the point, the agent, and getting the path as an out parameter, again to avoid having to recalculate it. If it's a valid terrain point, we assign the valid terrain point variable, reset the terrain point so it's ready to be used and break out of the loop. Then we check if the valid terrain point variable is not null as we may have gone through the entire list of available smart terrain points without finding a valid one. If it's not null, we remove it from the available smart terrain point list and add it to the in-use one. And finally, we return it to the caller. Next, we have the isValidTerrainPoint method that we just used. First, it assumes the path is invalid and sets the path to null, as the out parameter needs to be assigned before exiting the function. 
Then we check if the terrain point is not on cooldown and if the behavior tree type of the NPC is the behavior tree type of the STP as these are the less costly checks so we want to get those done first to not bother with more expensive ones if these are going to invalidate the STP anyway. Next we check if the NPC is within max range of the STP and if it is then we can do more expensive checks. We first sample the position to ensure the STP is on nav mesh, even if it should be anyway, and if it is, we try to calculate a path to it. The path is valid if the path status returned is nav mesh path status complete. This function might be a problem later if the pathfinding system is really busy, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, as there are multiple ways of solving it depending on what's happening. So basically this function assumes the STP is invalid and only if all these checks are true that we set the isValidBool to true. Then we have our utility function is on navmesh that we use both in the function above and in the smart terrain point awake function, with one overload for callers that don't need the navmesh hit struct. And finally, we have a function on smart terrain point exit to return the STP back to its list of available STPs. So that's all the STP manager needs for this to work. Let's look at the behavior tree and see how that brings all this together. Don't worry, we aren't going to go over the code of each new behavior tree node as it's pretty straightforward and you can dig in for yourself, but we're going to cover the nodes of the behavior tree that allow the system to work. So in our guard main behavior, I initially only checked if the NPC was hostile and if it should execute the hostile behavior. If it wasn't hostile, then we went into an idle wander. I added a step between these two to find an STP. So first, the behavior tree checks if it has an STP. And if it does, it executes the execute STP subtree. If it doesn't, the sequence will fail, and because the selector behind it receives failure, it will execute the next node, which is find and select STP. If this node finds an STP, it will return success, and the selector will return success exiting the behavior tree. So on the next frame, has STP will be true and the execute STP behavior will run. If all that fails, then it will fall back to the wander behavior. The execute STP behavior looks like this. First, we set an until failure node, so this tree keeps executing until it fails. And we don't need to check the rest of the behavior tree behind it. I added a node to be executed when the tree fails to exit the STP automatically. So then we have a sequence that first checks if the NPC is not hostile. If he is hostile, then the sequence fails, the tree fails, and the behavior tree and STP exit. If he isn't hostile, we set the agent speed to his walking speed and move on to the next selector. The selector first checks if it needs to walk to the STP. If it doesn't and already reached or started the STP, then it runs the sequence here. This sequence checks if the NPC has reached a path point, and if it has, then we return the BT wait node. The BT wait node is similar to the until failure node, which forces the behavior tree to execute this part of the tree continuously without running anything else. So once this node is entered, the behavior tree directly jumps here every frame and ignores the rest of the tree. The BT wait node checks if the wait time is done, which is specified by the STP itself in BT wait at STP path point. And it also checks if the NPC is hostile. Because we aren't running any other part of the tree, we need to check if the NPC is hostile so we can stop waiting and exit the hostile behavior. So if the NPC is not walking to the STP, hasn't reached a path point and isn't waiting at a path point, then we simply call follow STP path, which ensures the NPC has the next path point as its destination. And that's it. It seems like a pretty complicated part of the tree, but it's pretty simple. An improvement we can make here is specify a behavior tree subnode in the STP itself and return that when the STP is selected. Maybe we'll cover that in another tutorial, but for now the execute STP tree is generic to all smart terrain points. If we simply look at what we have now, when I press play, you see the NPC selecting the nearest available STP, walking to it and executing the path. If none is found, they will just wander around as they did before. This was quite a long tutorial, but I hope you have learned something today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or join the Discord channel to discuss it further.
If you're looking to download the project yourself, remember to clone it through Git and not just download it from the Bitbucket website. The project uses Git large file storage to store the assets of the repository, and these won't be included in the downloaded zip directly from the website, so it needs to be cloned and synced through Git. In the next episode, we'll start expanding the map and making encounters to further develop our open world AI. So that's about it for this one. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.